Still still see Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host Jim Sella in studio today with co-host Jay Dash and JK47. We're going to talk about the Pirates Phillies series from the other day. W what were the dates? 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. It was a four game series at Philadelphia. What's that? Citizens Bank Ballpark. I think so. Fans, if you want to hear uh, information about the Cardinals series right before this, you can check it out on our YouTube channel or check it out on our Facebook page. Buccos took that series 2-1 from the Cards, moving into this series with the Phillies. They split a series with the Phillies recently, didn't they? Other than this one? No, no. This, this was the only series they played against them this season, and you're right, they did split it 2-2, unfortunately, because they were up 2-0 in this series at one point. Pittsburgh actually came into the series 14-7 and against Philly over the past three seasons, and 8-2 and in their last 10 games at Philadelphia. Phillies are struggling. They need Ryan Howard to put the team on his back. He did in one game. <laughs> he did. But Monday was a 7:05 start, and the Pirates squeaked it out by one run, won four to three, moved to 16 and 16, back to 500 on the season. This was Jerome Williams versus Garrett Cole. Pretty good performance by Cole going seven innings, only gave up six hits, two earned runs, two walks. He had six Ks. ZRA's at a 2-3-2 for the season. He also beaned my boy Ryan Howard, which is probably pretty funny. I didn't get to see that. I'm surprised you didn't blow my phone up when that happened. I don't care enough. Cole improved to 5-0 and on the season with a 2-3-6 ERA. Uh, he's won his last seven road outings, and all other than the one outing he's lost this year, he's won a whole buttload in a row. So yeah, he, he's, he's been really dominant. finally turned into that guy after the injury last year, the guy that the Buckeyes needed. Jerome Williams, on the other hand, this guy is a pitcher I do not like. He only went five innings, four hits, three earned runs, two walks, four Ks. He did let up a home run. His ERA is sitting at a terrible 521. But, hey, again, he kept him in the game. Sometimes that's all you got to do as a pitcher, especially for a team as garbage as the Phillies. Jared Hughes pitched a scoreless eighth inning. He allowed a hit and struck out a batter. His ERA lowered to 2.20. Marple Lanson allowed an earned run. He had actually a home run. This is the game I was talking about last segment. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he allowed two hits, including the home run that I just mentioned. But he held on for his ace save of the season. You know, shaking up the lineup still. Gung starting at third base. Harrison was again on the bench. Chris Stewart started the catcher. The lineup looked like this. Polanco, Walker, Kutch, Marte, Alvarez, Gung, Mercer, Stewart, and then Cole. So, Harrison played left field the other day, didn't he? Yes. Jeez. I actually wouldn't mind seeing him start to move around again like he was last year. Maybe that'll something get him going a little bit. He needs needs the surprise of what's going to happen today. <laughs> you know what I mean? He can't feel comfortable. But in the first inning, there's a lot of first inning scoring going on recently this time not the pirates it was the phillies to score first it was all with two outs utley walked howard singled sizemore singled utley home to make it one nothing i didn't know howard knew how to hit singles i thought it was home run or strike out that's what it's been most of his career <laughs> if he's gonna get another hit though it's gonna be a single it's definitely not gonna be a triple or a double no there'll be no extra base <laughs> hits unless it leaves the yard in the third inning, the Pirates got on the board in a big way. Polanco walked with one out, stole second after a walker fly out. Kutch followed with a walk, then Marte hit the big three-run homer. So Marte coming up big again, make it 3-1 Pirates at this point. Bucko's turn to get a three-run homer. And with Cole in the mound, three runs should be enough most games. The Phillies did not score again until the sixth inning. It was off of Cole, though. Govis walked to start the inning. Howard was hit by a pitch with one out. There's the hit by pitch you love. Sizemore immediately followed with a single, scoring Galvis to make it 3-2. to two. Moving to the seventh inning, uh, Jake Diekman coming on the pitch. Polanco reached on an infield single with one out. Walker followed with a walk. Polanco moved to third base on a throwing error by Ruiz. Garcia came on, relieved Diekman. Yes, that is Luis Garcia, by the way. Sorry, I didn't write his first name. Is that Andy Garcia's brother? <laughs> Cuts you the sacrifice fly scoring Polanco. That made it 4-2. That would be enough for the Buccos. Ninth inning would come on. Melanson would pitch, as we mentioned earlier. The first batter. Odubel. 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 
<laughs> Adubu Herrera. He is a rookie, and he's having a solid season for Philly. But uh, he had his first major league home run. That made it 4-3. Still in favor of the Pirates. And Mal this is when I was thinking of parlay. Mm. Then Mal and I was just laughing. Melanza would also allow a single before retiring the final two batters. But, I mean, it down. Took care of business. Oh. Anything less would be uncivilized. Yes, now this Upside is one down. of the outings you were talking about, 47, where he's letting up too many hits here and there. But, you know, nobody's perfect either. And as long as he doesn't blow the save, I'm fine with it. You're going to give up a runs here and there. If you can make it in uh, happen where you still get the save, then I'm I'm really happy with that. Yeah, unless you're Eric Gagne and on steroids, you ain't. <laughs> Eric well, Gagne. I mean, obviously, you'll take favorable results any time you can get them. I mean, it's just alarming to me that the amount of base runners that he's been allowing this season so we'll, far. We'll have to look into it at the end of the segment, see how many base runners he actually did allow. Cole took the win, moved to 5-1. and one. Jerome Williams. Does so, Cole have a shot at 20 wins? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Be the first this Bucko base. to hit 20 wins in a while. I was thinking, actually, what's the chances that Cole, Liriano, and Burnett all make the All-Stars? Wouldn't that be crazy? I mean, there's a shot the way all three of them are pitching, quite honestly. That's what I'm thinking. Now, offensively, I'm thinking just Marte at this point, but yeah, I... I could see all three of those pitchers making the All-Stars right now if they keep Especially with it meaning something. You know, the yeah. All-Star game of baseball, the winner gets home field advantage for their league in the World Series. So, yeah, I mean, if you're smart, you're taking the guys who are pitching the best. And they're probably, I, I mean, I'm not a huge baseball fan, but they got to be at least one of the best one, two, three uh, right now they are, starters yeah. in, the rota in, in the league. Definitely. And I like how Locke's pitching out of a four or five spot, too. The problem is Worley right now. I do like Worley more than Locke as a fan, but Worley just isn't getting it done at this point. Melanson got the save in this one, his eighth in nine tries this season. Uh, leading the Bucko Barrage this game was Gregory Polanco, went two for four. He scored a couple of runs, drew a walk, stole his 10th base of the season. Neil Walker went one for three, his ninth double of the year. He drew a walk, and he was hit by a pitch. The real deal. Kutch went 0 for 2. He drove in his 15th RBI of the season. That big insurance run that we mentioned earlier, he scored a run and drew a walk also. Sterling Marte had the big three-run shot. He ended up going 1 for 4 today, his eighth home run. 24 RBIs now for the season. That's huge. He's well on his way to 100 RBIs. Somebody's got to do it. Gung went 1 for 3, his fourth double of the year. He was hit by a pitch too. So, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing... That was his first hit-by-pitch of his career, and he took the scorecard from Clint Hurdle because of it. Apparently getting hit by balls is awesome in Korea. Chris Stewart went two for four with a double. I mean, from the Philadelphia side, Grady Sizemore, two for four. He drove in two runs for his fifth RBI of the year. Uh, Herrera went one for four with the home run, his tenth RBI of the season. He scored a run. Chase Utley, I mean, he's off to a really rough start this Terrible. year. He, Nobody I was watching him catch. swing, man. I think this guy might be washed up. Loser. I was just looking at his swing, man. It does not look smooth anymore. He probably isn't having fun out there losing either. I wrote it's a, not fun for a veteran player like him to lose. Well, I wrote a letter to him seeing if he'd have a catch with me, and he wasn't. Maybe, maybe not that responsive, huh? I don't think he was. Well, he responded with a one for three day at the plate today. So I mean. <laughs> Maybe that rejuvenated them a little bit. That moves the Pirates into Tuesday. Another 7.05 start in the offense and pitching. Both played very well in this game. They won easily 7-2, moved to 17-16 and on the season. Finally above 500. You think you already taken the first two games of the series versus one of the worst teams in the league. At worst now, you take three or four, and it's a very nice series, but it didn't happen for them. Mm. Philly moved to 11-23 at this point. It's the club's worst start since 1971. We weren't even born yet. Burnett had another solid outing. Seven innings pitched. He did give up six hits, only two runs, one earn, one walk, five Ks, a paltry 1-6 ERA. That's crazy. Cy I knew Young. we should have signed him, dude. He's awesome. Oh, it's still early. Just, what, seven, seven starts into the season. So you got to do it another 25 times. But, yeah, right now he has... I mean, really, you could say early Cy Young talk for him. Please believe. I don't think he's going to win a Cy Young. No, if me he, neither. If he only gets to, if he only gets ten wins, because 
poor well, run I, support. But, they won't look at that though. I mean, they oh, will they, look they, at they it. They will but, look at it. Believe me. But trust me, if his ERA is sitting well below two, even below one seventy <laughs> later in the season, I mean, it's hard not to consider. Him. Burnett actually allowed two runs or fewer in all seven outings this season. He had a league leading eighteen losses with the Phillies last year, so and, he wanted to stick it to him in his game, and he did. Well, he was we, walking everybody last year too. Well, as we said, go, coming into the season, though, you know, the big factor with him last year is it was just a bad year in Philadelphia. He was battling health issues. Yeah, you were talking, uh, Jim. You were talking about Chase Utley playing like crap. Maybe he just hates hates it in Philadelphia now. Well, Burnett actually took four million less to play for the yeah. Pirates, and he's pitching like he did two or three years ago. Actually, he's pitching better than that right now. But it, last year he was terrible. Yeah, he was miserable last year. I heard him say in an interview when he came back, he was just happy to be somewhere where he felt, you know, wanted. You know, knew the team had a chance to at least contend, and he really likes the Pirates pitching coach Ray Searage. Really looks at him as like a father type figure. He's got those Pirates pitchers pitching great. For the Philadelphia Phillies, it was Sean O'Sullivan on the mound. This dude's a beat nut. He, he went five innings, let up five hits. He kept them in the game, just three earned runs allowed, one walk, two Ks. He did let up a home run. His ERA is sitting at 506 at this point. But the Pirates got to the bullpen more than anything. Well, Scahill came on, pitched a scoreless eighth inning. He allowed a hit, struck out a batter. .63 ERA for the year, as we were saying earlier. Pitching excellent this year. Caminero came in, pitched a scoreless ninth. He looked a little bit better this game, allowing one hit, striking out a batter. 420 ERA. <laughs> Le'Veon Bell got to like that. <laughs> Gung started at shortstop today with Mercer sitting, so, I mean, was this his first start at shortstop? I don't think it was his first start at shortstop, but this is the position I want to see him playing because it keeps Harrison in the game. But, I mean, the lineup actually ended up looking like this. Uh, Polanco, Walker, Koch, Marte, Pedro, Gung, Harrison, Cervelli, and A.J. Burnett. Yes, I'd like to see Walker batting lower in the order and Harrison up around second. Actually, I, I want to see Polanco, Koch, and Marte together. So, eventually, I want to see Marte second when they get a true uh, number four hitter. But, until then... I'd like to see Walker in the five hole and Harrison at two when he's hitting well. What if Marte is that true number four hitter? Well, then I'd he, like to find another one hitter because I want Polanco, Kutch, and Marte batting back to back to back in the future. With hopefully Alvarez behind him. Well, I think he'll be gone by then. Me too, but if but he can. I'm loving me some Josh Bell, man. That first baseman they have in the minors, this dude is going to be. He is the future first baseman for the Pirates, no no doubt about it. And what was he, the number, the 47th top overall prospect, according to Major League MLB.com? Correct. And when the Pirates drafted him, it, they drafted him real high. It was what? Top, second, second overall yeah, pick. Yeah, second overall pick. That's he actually end. said that he was not going to sign with the Pirates. Yeah, he, he, was, he wanted to go to college. Yeah. We actually lured him out. He, he said he wasn't going to sign with anyone, and the Pirates drafted him anyways. And that's why you take the chance on drafting these people, because you get a steal if it happens, if you, you're able to sign them. Uh, Burnett faced a minimum through three innings with a single by Ruiz, but he got caught stealing because Carlos Ruiz is probably the slowest guy in baseball, and there's no reason for him to get caught stealing, or for him to steal a base. And like we said before, Burnett, can't hold anybody on base. You gotta kind of wonder what the hell he was thinking, huh? Yeah, I, I can't believe... I, I guess Ruiz thought, hey, Burnett can't hold anyone on. This might be the first chance I can steal a base <laughs> in 10 years. And it, it still didn't work out. Burnett is not that bad at holding people. Either that or it's a, it was a failed hit-and-run attempt. But the Pirates got the scoring started first in the top of the fourth inning. Marte was hit by a pitch to start the inning. Alvarez followed with a single, putting runners on first and third with no outs. Gung struck out after that, and then Harrison hit the big three-run homer, which is hopefully the hit that breaks him out of his terrible slump to start this season and give the Pirates a 3 nothing lead here. Now we move to the bottom of the sixth next. Uh, Blanco doubled to start the inning. Revere followed with a double of his own to score Blanco. He would move to third base on a Blanco throwing error. It's 3-1 Philadelphia at this point. Galvis would line out. Utley grounded out to Walker, scored Rivera. 
it's 3-2 Pirates right now. Moving to the seventh, with Luis Garcia pitching. Harrison walked and stole second to start the inning. Cervelli would follow that with a walk. Burnett sacrificed both runners over. Yeah, so you got guys on second and third at this point with one out. And Polanco comes up. He singles home Harrison and Cervelli. Hits 5-2 Buckos. Walker would ground out next, moving Polanco to third. Cutch followed with a two-run home run. It's 7-2 Buckos. That's how it would stay. That's how it would end. Yeah, it wasn't a big home run by Cutch. They didn't really need it, but it's nice to see him put the ball over the wall and start getting his stroke back. Stroke. Billy Squire would be proud. Burnett got the win, his second of the season, moved to 2-1, and one, and the loss goes to Sean O'Sullivan, moving to 0-2 on the year. So overall, a solid game today. Uh, Buckos had a formidable attack. Polanco went 1-4, for four. he drove in two runs. He has 11 RBIs on the season at this point. He also committed his third there. Kutch went 2-4, for four, his third home run of the year. He is uh, he drove in two runs. He has 17 RBIs at this point. He scored a run. Josh Harrison, the big three-run home run, his third of the year. His three RBIs gives him nine. He scored a couple of runs, stole a base, drew a walk. He was actually at a two for 27 slump at this point. He actually had a big error also this game. Yeah, his sixth error of the sixth season error. already. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I believe he had six all of last season, and actually... Uh, as we're recording this, his game today against the Cubs, he had another error. So he has seven errors now. Needs to get it together. Cervelli, uh, we'll wrap it up with the Buckers with him. Uh, he uh, went two for three with a pair of doubles. He scored a run and drew a walk. How about those Philadelphia Phillies? One of my favorite players here, Ben Revere. He went one for four, had a double with seventh RBI on a run. He's having a down season. There's actually talk about them trading him if he can put together some good games, you know, get a little bit of value in him. And I was talking a couple years ago the Pirates should bring him in. I don't know if they should now, but if Corey Hart doesn't pick his average up, Maybe you'd think about bringing in a Ben Revere as a fourth outfit. Uh, I that? hear he's going to Boston because that's where his brother Paul used to live. The Redcoats are coming. That's it. You got to let him know. Utley, one for four with an RBI. So at least he's putting the ball in play, getting on base here and there, huh? Chase you know, Utley, you got to love We don't have to sugarcoat it for him. He's garbage now. He's old. We're just going to say it. It's unfortunate. I, I believe he <laughs> can turn it around. I, I still believe in Chase Utley. Get your swing uh, back together, man. He needs to chase it. That moves them into Wednesday. Tough game Wednesday. Tough loss for Liriano. Yeah. This was actually one of my favorite games to watch of the season. I know they lost, but they had a chance to win it in the end. It didn't work out. But it was a fun game to watch. And, uh, you know, you can't win every game. You face Cole Hamels. Hey, sometimes a loss is a loss. I wanted them to come back and win this fourth game, which also didn't happen, though. But this game, they lost 3-2, to two, moved to 17-17 and 17 on the season. Cole Hamels versus Francisco Liriano. Liriano pitched well again. Seven innings, seven hits, three earned runs, three walks, six Ks. His ERA sitting at a nice 296 at this point. Hamels almost matched him, though, in this game. Seven innings pitched, five hits, two earned runs, and a walk, nine Ks. Yeah, he, he didn't almost match him. He outdoed him. Bean, Cutch, and Harrison, too. That's I love people get beaned. I don't want to see him get beaned in the face like Gene Carlos Stan or anything, but when people just get regular beaned, it's awesome. Hamels, though, 3.53 ERA at this point. Uh, he actually came into the game 2-2 two and two with a 2.76 ERA and seven career starts against the Pirates. And after this game, he is now 98-14 and 14 in 150 career starts when he gets three runs. That's beast so you mode. give him three runs, this dude's going to win the game for you. Scahill came on. He pitched a perfect eighth inning, striking out two batters. .59 ERA, so, I mean, this guy's still getting it done. Dominating. Sounds pretty high to me. You know, I mean, that's pretty much it for the Bucko bullpen. I mean, uh, lineup once again, shaking up. Sean Rodriguez would get the start at first base. Corey Hart starting in right field. Well, yeah, Pe Pedro and Polanco are the two lefties in the lineup, and Cole Hamels is the lefty. That's only the fourth lefty they faced all season, by far the fewest in the majors. And you gotta, you got to find time to play Rodriguez and Hart. And I know I don't want to make Polanco sit every time there's a lefty, but with only four going the entire season, I can see sitting them 
But as the season goes along, I want to see Polanco get some starts versus some lefties. This guy can't be a platoon player. No, you got to be able to do it every day if you want to be the caliber player that he thinks he is. And, the, you know, for the contract he's asking the Pirates for. They've offered him a couple deals, and he's turned them down now. Well, he's got to prove it. He's got to prove he's worth that more money. And a big part of that is being an everyday player and getting hit off left-handed pitchers. Listen to this lineup today. Harrison, Rodriguez, Kutch, Marte, Hart, Cervelli, Walker, Mercer, Liriano. It's all over the place. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get. It's like Herbal's a box of chocolates. Forrest Gump making this lineup. There was no scoring through the first four innings. Leary Ono actually retired nine straight between the second and fourth innings. So he was dominating at one point in his game. And the Pirates got the scoring started first in this one in the top of the fifth. Walker and Mercer led off with singles to put Mentna on first and second. Leary Ono sacrificed them to second and third. And then Harrison was hit by a pitch to load the bases. Uh, Rodriguez followed that up with a strikeout. So you got two outs and the bases loaded. And then Kutch singled home two to make it 2-0. Two, two Kutch followed that with a stolen base to put guys on second and third. But Marte ended up grounding out. So there was a chance to add a couple more runs and maybe pull out a win in this game. And they didn't come up with those runs. Yeah, sometimes the ball just doesn't drop where you want it. But the Phillies came right back in the bottom of the fifth. Francourt and Cesar Hernandez started the inning off with a single each. Ruiz followed with a double, scoring Francourt and moving Hernandez to third to make it 2-1. to one. And then Hamels followed with a K, and Revere grounded out to Walker. But that scored Hernandez, moving Ruiz to third and making it 2-2 at that point. And then, unfortunately, Galvis followed with an RBI single to make it 3-2. And that was all the scoring they needed. The Pirates, like I said, though, they had a chance to win this game, and they had a chance in the top of the ninth inning as well. Papelbon came on. A dude who's been dominating all season. He walked Cervelli to start the inning. They brought in Lombardozzi to pinch run for Cervelli. Smart move there. And then Papelbon struck out Walker and then tried to pick off Lombardozzi, but he threw high, and Lombardozzi was actually able to move the third on the play. Unfortunately, he had to dive back in the first on the pickoff attempt. If not, he might have made it home to tie this game. But with a guy on third and one out, you're thinking you have a great chance to tie this game and send it into extra innings, but it didn't happen because Jordy Mercer hit a high but short fly ball to right field to Jeff Francourt. Did you see this play, 47? I did not, actually. And Francourt just gunned Lombardozzi at home. I mean, you had to send Lombardozzi. It, they already made the choice, and he was going, but he he was just out by a mile. It, the, the ball just wasn't hit far enough. So you're saying it was basically a coaching error at this point? I'd have sent Lombardozzi. Uh, you had to send him. Francourt just got a gun, and, I mean, he had to make the perfect throw, and he did. So what, they thought he had a candy arm out there in right field? Are you saying you wouldn't have sent him if it's a iffy he, I would if he have had to, I'd have had to have seen the ball get hit, truth be told. Well, if it, if it was hit as short as what you said, I mean, it depends on where you were in the lineup. Well, too. it was in foul territory. Do you know Citizens Bank Ballpark? It, Somewhat. It, like, it, down the lines, like, it, it cuts in. There's, like, a notch, like, in foul territory between first base and right field. And it was, like, right in front of that notch he caught the ball. I, I kind of felt he was going to be gunned. But if you don't send them there, you're risking just... Not, not scoring, really, you know what I mean? Yeah, but at the same time, too, making a final out at home play. It's tough. But that's what made it a fun game. I wasn't mad at the end of this game. You know, they lost by a run. They had to play the last play of the game to tie it up. It didn't happen. Frank Cor made a perfect throw right on the money. There's really nothing you can do about it. Holding them up to me, though, is a scary situation, too, because I don't want two outs with a guy on third. Then you have to come up with a hit. But, uh, I mean, I guess it's an extra batter. Better than nothing. But Hamels took the win, moved to 3-3. Three and three. Liriano took the loss, moved to 1-3. and three. Papelbon, his seventh save of the season. He passed Jose Mesa as the franchise's oh, all-time three. saves leader. 113 saves. And he also owns Boston's save mark with 219 saves. Dude's beast. So this guy owns the save mark for two different franchises. One fifteenth of the Major League Baseball, this guy owns the save they actually forward. tried moving him into the rotation. You remember that? It didn't really work out I, too well. It 
doesn't work out all the time. I remember a Roldis Chapman moved to the rotation there for a point. That was, that's just a mistake. When you got somebody that dominates that much, you know, I just leave him go. Yeah, just let him dominate. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Bucko attack went like this. Josh Harrison went one for three. He got hit by a pitch. Lots of Pirates getting hit by pitches these days, it Love seems. It. Kutch went one for three, drove in a pair of runs. His RBI total's at 19 right now. He still was second base. He was drilled, too. Francisco Cervelli went one for three and drew a walk. Neil Walker went one for three. He scored a run and drew a walk also. Jordy Mercer went one for four with a run. So, I mean, we were talking last week about how the Buccos weren't drawing walks. I mean, they've been getting on base more often. As you can see, they're actually yeah, scoring definitely. more runs now. Get hit by pitches and take walks, and you score runs. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily just about getting just getting hit by pitches and taking walks. It's being on base, because if you don't right. have people on base, you're not going to score. You know, uh, the Philly attack, Paul Revere, I mean, Ben Revere, <laughs> went one for four, his 11th RBI of the season. Freddie Galvis, two for three, his ninth RBI of the season. He drew a walk. Carlos Ruiz, one for three with a double, his fifth RBI of the season. He drew another walk also. It's a solid game played by both teams. I mean, and then obviously you don't want to lose a game to a bottom feeder like this, but Cole Hamels is a formidable opponent. Yeah, in a four-game series, you can't expect to come out with four wins. I thought, hey, you know what? You lost a fun game to watch. I'm not mad. Two to one in the series. Come back the next day. Take the series three to one. But it didn't happen. They lost this game Thursday, a 105 start. They lost four to two to move back under 500, 17 and 18 on the season. And it was Aaron Harang versus Vance Worley. Now, Harang, I really don't think he's the greatest pitcher in the world, but did you see him pitch? Did you get to see any of this game 47? Because, oh my God, this guy is killing it. I'll tell you what, I mean, Harang's always been great against the Buccos, but they've never actually hit him well. I mean, this, we'll get to this in a second whenever we talk about Aaron Harang, but I mean, this guy, I mean, he's been, had an up-and-down career. Yeah, you know, he came I thought he lost. He's 37 years old, so I thought he was about done, but he, he looks as good as he ever has. Well, I mean, that it's been like this for him his whole career. You know, I mean, he'll look, he'll look like a Cy Young winner for like a five, six start stretch. He'll implode a little bit, and then he'll get right back up there. This guy was a big time prospect whenever he actually first broke into the league with Oakland. You know, I don't know how many years ago. Now, Worley, this is another guy just like AJ Burnett that played for the Phillies before, and he was actually drafted by the Phillies. Ian went 11-3 and and finished third in NL Rookie of the Year voting the year they won their division title in 2011. So he was a big part of that rotation back in the day, and he was not a big part of the rotation on this day. He went four innings, allowed eight hits, three earned runs, just one earned though, so it's not like he gave up a ton of runs or anything, but he just didn't last. One walk, Zero Ks again for the second straight start. Yeah. So Worley has no Ks in two straight starts. That's something that's hard to do in itself. A little worried about Worley. Actually, I'm a little bit worried. No strikeouts in two starts is... Yeah, it's scary. Alarming, actually. To the bullpen, my friend. Well, yeah. I mean, Morton's coming back, so he's going to be the one that's out of this rotation. Yeah, I mean, there's no... I, I don't want it to happen. I do like Worley, but it's it's going to happen. We're going to talk about Aaron Harag now. He went eight in this game, gave up five hits, no earned runs, one walk, six strikeouts. His ERA is sitting at 2.03 for the season. He beaned Gung, too, didn't he? That's yes. a hate crime. Yeah, more beaning. I love it. Gung actually got beaned twice in this game, once <laughs> nice. by Harang and once by Papelborn. <laughs> but 2.03 ERA out of Aaron Harang so far... It's it's amazing to me, and like you said, he's dominant against the Bucks in his career, eighteen and eight now. Buckers have always had trouble with this guy. Money in the bank. Look at Harang at home this season: an O sixty one ERA in four starts at home, two earned runs in twenty nine in the third innings. This guy is straight dominating, and you know what? They actually got to him early. He threw twenty seven pitches in the first inning. And I thought I thought they were gonna get to him, and it never worked out. He still lasted eight innings. It's always sunny in Philadelphia for Harang. The Buckeyes bullpen. Rodimus Lee's allowed one earned run, two hits, including a home run and two walks. One of those walks were intentional. He struck out two, and he pitched. He went three innings in this game. Had to. Worley only lasted four innings. 
Well, I mean, his ER is actually sitting at a respectable 3.21 ERA. Yeah, it's not terrible. He's just... He, he needs to stick in the long relief like he did here. Quit quit bringing him in late in games. Bobby Love from Boyce, he uh, made his first appearance in this baseball game. He allowed a hit, and he struck out a batter the scoreless eighth inning. It was Beautiful ERA. As I was just saying, his first appearance of the year, his 17th career appearance, 10 with Seattle in 2013, 6 with the Bucks last year. Yeah, this is a guy we... Heard his name come up here and there. He's nothing special. I think his ERA is actually a little over five career. But, like I said, it's, what, 17 appearances? So we'll have to see see what this guy can do. A good first outing for him. You know, getting to the lineup, changed around again. Josh Harrison starting in left field. Marte in center field. Gung at third base. Kutch was off today. Stewart was the starting catcher. Your lineup looked like this. It was Polanco, Harrison, Walker, Marte, Alvarez, Gung, Mercer, Stewart, and Worley. So another game, another different lineup. Yeah, every day now. Which, I mean, I'm not even actually sure if I'm a big fan of this. I never really did change. In the, I never did like switching around the batting order too much. I mean, you got to allow guys to try to get comfortable. Yeah, when a guy gets comfortable in a spot like Polanco, I want him batting first every day. Now, if a guy's struggling, I don't mind you moving him around, see if he can get something started somewhere else. But it, it is tough seeing a different lineup every day. Like I said in the first inning, Harang threw 27 pitchers. He left two runners in scoring position after a Harrison single and a Marte double. Uh, Polanco had a 10-pitch at bat in this inning. Walker had a 9-pitch at bat. So you're thinking, all right, Harang's going to lose it early. He's going to be out by the fifth inning, and then the Pirates can get to work on this bullpen. But it just never happened. Harang settled down and dominated all game long. Pittsburgh actually allowed just four first-inning runs in its previous 34 games combined this season, by far the fewest in the major leagues. But today, the the Phillies were able to put a couple runs on the board early. Uh, like we said, Worley just didn't have it. And plus, the defense didn't work well behind them. They had, this was a terrible game by the Pirates. One of the worst I've seen all season. Revere reached on an error to open the game for the Phillies. A Walker error, his first of the season. The ball just ate him up. It was a hard ground ball. Galvis followed with a single, and then with one out, Howard singled to load the bases. Cesar Hernandez walked to score Revere, so you got a bases loaded walk coming from Worley, and then Sizemore singled home Galvis to, to make it 2 nothing. Uh, Worley actually did escape trouble in this inning, though, because he left the bases loaded and ended the inning on a double play. The Phillies were back at it in the third as well. Galvis reached on an infield single, to Walker. Pedro made a big mistake on this play. It doesn't go in the books as an error, but it was a ground ball to Walker, and Pedro went after it like he could have got to it, and then when he realized that Walker, it was an easy just a, a routine ground ball to Neil Walker, it was too late for Elvarez to get back to first, and Worley decided I don't even feel like running the first, so there was no one on first, so that it goes in the books as a single, but it, it that was an easy out right there, and it cost him because Gova stole second after that, after an Utley flyout. Howard singled, moving Gova to third, and then Gova scored on a Sizemore ground ball that Mercer couldn't handle. So there's a Mercer error right there. Uh, it, it doesn't go down as two errors in the inning, but you got an error and a mental error, and it cost him a run, make it 3 nothing. Fifth inning now. Lees would be in pitching by it this time. Already. First pitch. Jim Sella fan favorite, Ryan Howard, homered on his first pitch. And that's 4 nothing Philadelphia at this point. And, I mean, and that's pretty much what it would stay until the top of the ninth inning. Yeah, this game was over by this point. And even what the Pirates did here in the ninth was, it didn't get me excited. But, I mean... Giles would be the pitcher now, and Harrison singled, moved to second on the pass ball. He would then move to third on a Neil Walker ground out. Sterling Marte then hit an RBI double, making it 4-1 Philadelphia. Papelbaum would come on to replace Giles. Marte moved to third on a fielder's indifference, and Alvarez grounded out to bring him home. So, I mean, it's two, it's 4-2 to two Philly at this point. You know, the Buckets trying to make a comeback. Gung would actually get hit by Papelbon, and Kutch would actually come in to pinch hit for Jordy Mercer, but he fouled out on the pop-up to end the game. 
Yeah, so another chance for Kutch to come up with a big hit, and he was unable to do it. That's twice we were talking about that. So uh, even though his hitting is back, he's not coming up with the big, big clutch hits that he needs to come up with. Harang, he got the win already. His fourth on the season. He has three losses as well. Seven decisions already for this guy. Uh, Worley took the loss. He moved to 2-3, and three, and Papelbon got his eighth save and 114th for the Phillies in his career. You know, the, the Pirates hitting attack today, there, there really wasn't much of one. Pretty much just Harrison and Marte, each of them went three for four. Marte getting two, or getting an RBI du with that RBI double. He has 25 RBIs on this season. Yeah, he, he had, had two doubles in this game, actually. But him and Harrison both got caught stealing as well. Harrison's average finally up over the men, or, uh, or at least it's at the Mendoza the line yeah. anyway. Yeah, batting at even 200. Wow. Yeah, Gung 0 for 2. He got hit by a pitch twice in this game. And Walker and Mercer, like we said, both had an error. Walker's first, Mercer's second. Uh, again, inconsistencies out of the defense. Yeah, for the Phillies, Freddie Galvis having a great game. He went 3 for 3, scored a pair of runs, drew a walk, and he stole his third base of the season. He actually committed his first, fifth error of the year also during this ball game. Ryan Howard won three for four, his seventh home run of the year, drove in his 16th run. Grady Sizemore went one for four with his sixth RBI of the season. Ben Revere went one for four with a run. He actually got caught s stealing. For the third time, yes. All right, so let's move into some series notes here. The Pirates batters have been hit by a pitch, a major league leading 100 times since the start of the last season. So like you were just mentioning, getting hit uh, by a pitch a lot recently. Well, actually, over the past year and a quarter now almost. Yeah, I don't know what the exact stats are, but it's got to be even close to longer than that. At least we're in the top three because it's ever since Kutch has really come into prominence. The Buccos have just been getting bean, especially by the Reds. They've been the hell out of us. Yeah, that's an ongoing thing. That's been going on for the past three or four seasons between those two teams. The starting pitching in this series was a dominant. Seven innings Pitched each. each out of Cole Burnett and Liriano and a total of six earned runs combined. So like we were saying, three potential all-stars right here. Only two wins out of those three dominant performances kind of hurts. Worley looks like he's going to be the odd bat out once Charlie Morton comes back. Yes, unfortunately, I'm a Worley fan, but it, Morton, Morton's going to be in this rotation, and it, it can't be Locke. I know Locke got lit up today. Friday against the Cubs were, as we're doing this, but I still want to keep locking this rotation because he's looked pretty good so far. Well, Kutch has improved. The knee looks like it's not bothering him as much. Uh, Jay Hayes starting to look better at the plate. I guess after calling Mark Madden, it, it made his confidence a little bit better. He's not hating on him as much. Yeah, if we can get Kutch going and Jay Hay going, that's going to be huge because you got Marte, Polanco, Gung, and Walker already hitting the ball pretty well. Mercer's coming on a little bit as well. Not quite as much as you want. And then Cervelli and Pedro have been solid this season, so this lineup's starting to come together, together finally. I don't know if I'd call Pedro solid this season, but... We don't even have time for that argument between me me and you, Dash. Uh, the defensive inconsistencies have popped back up again. Uh, in the first series we talked about, they actually had two errors that I didn't even mention. It didn't cost them or anything. But in this series, more errors, and I'm getting a little worried about this defense. I don't know what it is. Look at Jay Hay. He already has more errors this season than he had all of last year. He's lost it on the field. And you know Pedro's not, not that he's terrible, but he's not going to be a gold glover there at first base being at his first year at the position. Yeah, he's not making too, too many errors, but he's making mental mistakes still, and he still has to learn the position, and... That's going to help in the long run. That could have helped in this game. You expected him to be the worst defensive player in the infield just because of learning the new position. You know, and Harrison played so well last year. Mercer's always had above average fielding, and Walker's really coming to his own at second base. And the Pirates are known to have one of the better defenses of in ba defenses in baseball. That's one of the their biggest assets in how they win games. So they need to get back to playing good defense. Well, I mean, Ray Searid teaches these guys to pitch for ground balls not necessarily strikeouts so I mean if the defense is going to be suspect and I mean that's going to continue to be big problems how about the Cole Stewart combination they are liking when Stewart catches Cole now so you might see that more often going forward well if that's what Garrett Cole wants that's what Garrett Cole should get <laughs> please believe 
So that wraps it up. How about your hitters and pitchers of the series? Oh, my hitter of the series, I'm going to give to Sterling Marte. Sterling you know, Marte. He's been the only consistent run producer in the lineup. He got it done this series. My pitcher of the series, I mean, it's actually going to, for me, it came down between Garrett Cole and A.J. Burnett, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it to A.J. Burnett because, you know, you keep on waiting for him to slow down. It's not happening right now. Please believe. Pitching lights out baseball. Got to go with him. Real quick, let's move on to what's next. They're heading to Chicago to play a three-game series starting today, Friday, May 15th. It'll be Locke versus Hendricks in the first game. The probable starters for Game 2 are Cole versus John Lester. And then in Game 3, it'll be A.J. Burnett versus Jake Arrieta. So I'm looking at Cole Lester as the primetime matchup in this series. And really, the, this first game, as we're doing, this is 10-10 right now in the 10th inning, I believe. The Pirates got to pull out two wins in this series. I'd like to see him get back over 500 at They've this point. They've been struggling against Chicago this season to open up. Yeah, actually struggling against the division in general. After that, they play a they come back home and play a two game series in the interleague series versus the Minnesota Twins, who are actually playing decent baseball right now. Mm. But the probable starters you got in the first game: Francisco Liriano versus Ricky Nolasco. Now, I expect Liriano to uh, come out ahead in that matchup, and then you got a decent matchup in Vance Worley and Mike Pelfrey. These are definitely the guys you want to face if, against this uh, up-and-coming Minnesota Twins team. Well, Please I mean, believe. Let's hope it, that is the two starters that end up pitching in this series. Uh, that'd be nice to miss their best pitchers. I mean, it'd just be a nice opportunity to get your offense keep, you know, keep at going on track, keep scoring runs. You know, they scored ten runs today. So I mean, after that, they go they are off Thursday and then start a big series versus the New York Mets next Friday. Potential playoff matchup. And the the first matchup should feature Noah Syndergaard if everything plays out right. But how about the standings? What are they looking like right now, 47? Oh, well, St. Louis is still killing it. They're uh, sitting at 24-10 and 10 right now. Yeah, it's all because of the home record. Well, Look at that, 14-3 at home. 14-3 home record. Somebody got to get to him at Bush. You know, Chicago Cubs are in second place. They're at 19 and 15. So, I mean, they've been... Playing good baseball. They might move to 20 and 15 after today. We'll have to see. You know, Cincinnati's 18 and 17. You know, I mean, not a super big shocker for me. I mean... I'm hearing a lot of stuff. A lot of scouts are coming to watch Johnny Cueto. So, if they, if they aren't able to stay in this race early, you might see them trade off a couple pieces. They're very much in it right now. I mean, uh, right now the wild card situation in the National League's looking tight. Yeah, uh, Pittsburgh's only a couple games back in the wild card right now, but they're fourth in their division at what, 17 and 18? Yeah, they gotta pick it up. Pirate Buckers definitely need to pick, especially against the division. Like, they we're need getting... to start winning on the road a little bit more, too. 8 and 11 on the road, that's just not going to get it done. They they are a good home team. I mean, they're sitting at 9 and 7 right now, not great, but you expect them to win more than they lose at home, but on the road, they got to stay around 500 at least. And uh, Milwaukee, I mean, finishes off the division. They're 12 and 23. Their uh, manager Ron Renicky. Renicky, yeah. Ron Renicky. He actually just lost his job in the last yeah, week. Yeah, Craig Council. That's who's managing the team now. He was the uh, World Series hero back at it, down in Arizona, wasn't he? No, not Arizona. Um, Miami. Miami. Well, Florida at the time. Actually, I think he played for Arizona for their Oh, he did play for championship Arizona. Championship, yeah. too. But they also got other problems. Gene Segura just went to the DL, so they have a lot of problems. Lou Croy still isn't back yet. I don't see them making a run anytime soon. They're not going to make a run anywhere except for the toilet bowl. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you guys for coming in studio. Thank you fans for listening. Fans, you could follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You could follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to that YouTube channel. Hopefully the Buccos can get two series victories this week.